Hey guys, Ken here and we are going to be doing another Photoshop tutorial. Today we're going to be creating Dundio's breakfast cereal. And this is obviously a fake product based on the TV show The Office. And I'm going to be using Photoshop tools as well as a template which I've made specifically for the assignment. And of course, material that I have blatantly stolen from the internet. Now it's worth noting that this is a video tutorial for education purposes only. No money is made. Please do not sue me for stealing your intellectual property. So our final product, which is going to look something like this, starts out as a template. And this is the template that you will download off of our class website. You can find something similar to this online if you're doing this just out of curiosity and not for my class. But this template is basically made up of three elements. We've got just our plain white base. It has our box layout. Eventually, we will get rid of this box layout. You won't see it. And graphic elements. And again, eventually, we will get rid of these graphic elements. But it's just here to help us remember where do we fold, where do we glue uh, for the purposes of the assignment. So our basic color scheme is going to be shaped of blue and so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to fill in this great big rectangle here which will become the base on top of which we build all of the other graphics and other elements that will make up our product so first let's just poke this graphic elements layer in the eye but we're going to create a base color here that's actually going to be a gradient and a gradient simply means it goes from a lighter color on top to a darker color on the bottom or vice versa so to create that what we need to do is select our color picker over here in our little color field and this color picker foreground color box will show up. So I want it to be light blue so I'm just going to click in this top corner and it's this light blue but I feel like I want it to be a little brighter even still. So I'm just going to bring this slider down. I don't want to get too far. I don't want it to get green. I just want it to be blue. And that looks about right. So I'm happy with this color. I am going to click OK. And then I'm going to draw out my rectangle using the rectangle tool. The shape tool is over here in your left hand side. This is your toolbar. And you've got a tool here called the shape tool. Now if it doesn't show a rectangle tool, hold down control on your keyboard and left click. And this little sub menu will pop up and you select the rectangle tool. And then you simply drag it out. You're just drawing this shape out and let go. And then it fills with this light blue. But like I told you, I want the gradient to go from a light blue down to a darker blue. And so to do that, we're going to use something called an FX tool. So down here at the bottom, underneath all of your layers, you'll see a button that says FX. Left click on that, and we're going to choose Gradient Overlay. Now Gradient Overlay has chosen some colors for me based on a previous version of this tutorial that I was trying to create. I don't want these colors. I want the other colors that I had chosen already. So we're going to click on the gradient toolbar right here and that brings up this color picker and then I'm going to left click on this little blue square over here on the far left and it's going to bring up this little color picker and I can click there and then like I said I wanted that to be a little lighter blue and so if I just drag it down you'll see the color is changing and that looks about right. This dark blue I think is a bit too dark I don't want it to be quite that dark so you can click on you can double click on the little button as well instead of clicking down here and and I want to lighten this up just a bit. The only other thing you need to make sure of is that your style for your gradient is linear. If you're on something else like radial or angle or one of these other ones, they just don't really do exactly what I want them to do. Maybe it'll work for you, but I like linear. Now, we need to do our flaps, top and bottom. And we want these top and bottom flaps to be the same color as the top and bottom of our gradient. And our little glue flap over here, we want it to have the same gradient that we've got on our main box. To do that, we're simply going to draw out another box for each of these things. And we're going to start with our glue flap over here. Before we move on though, the one thing I want to tell you, it's very important, is your layer panel is going to get very populated as we go through this project. And so you want to make sure that you're labeling your layers so that it's easier to find elements elements that you want to change, move around, resize, whatever. So I'm just going to call this rectangle one. I'm going to call it gradient base and hit enter. Now let's do our glue flap. So we're still going to be using the rectangle tool. We're simply going to drag it out just like we did before. Don't worry that it's not the same shape as the flap because we're going to fix that in a second and you click it and then we are going to add that gradient again. It's already preset to the thing we just did. So unless I tell it to do something differently, that's exactly what it will do the next time. And hit enter. Now we're going to fix this shape by going up to edit 
we're going to go down to transform and we are going to choose perspective. Now simply grab either the top or bottom front most square and just slowly drag it in and it'll do the same to either end and then it becomes the same shape as the flap. And we hit enter or return and there we have it. Let's get rid of our box layout for a second to make sure that these line up properly because again, we're not gonna have these lines later on and so we want to make sure that everything is aligned. So as you can see, we are just slightly off here and here. And so we're going to activate our rectangle, well, a new rectangle. And then we're going to use our move tool and then literally just click this move tool and then arrow up like once. And then it pretty much lines up. We're gonna put our box layout back on because I still want to use it as a guide. And this rectangle one, I'm going to change it to glue flap. Remember, label your layers. Now, we'll do the same thing for our top flaps and we'll do the same thing for our bottom flaps. Now, our top flap is a slightly different color than the top of our box because over here in our color palette, we've told it to do a different color. So that's an easy, easy fix. We just hit enter so our box is set. Then we're gonna go down here and we're going to click on our little dots. We're not gonna add a gradient tool this time. We're gonna use the paint bucket tool. So what this will do is it will fill this shape with the color that we tell it to. So by holding down option, we see a little eyedropper pop up. So you drag your thing down into this little section here, the color you want, hold option, and then left click your eyedropper. And now what it did is it just picked up this color. So it's like if you suck it up into an eyedropper and you're gonna squeeze it into this box. This is gonna tell us to rasterize. Not exactly sure what rasterize means, but I know you can't make changes unless you do it. So if I left click on it, it'll say rasterize the shape, say yes. And now I just simply left click and it will fill this with that color. And then we're gonna go up to edit, then we're going to transform perspective. Again, we're just going to bring this in a little bit and hit enter. Now, because this shape is the same as this shape, we don't have to do that again. We can copy and paste or we can duplicate this shape. So I'm gonna hold down Command or Control on your PC, Command on your Mac, and I'm gonna hit J. And J duplicates the layer. So now we can just click our Move tool, grab it, move it over and just fit it into place. We can do that again, Command J or Control J, and then we can drag this down to the bottom. Of course, it's upside down. So we're going to go to edit. We're going down to transform and we're going to flip vertical. Bing, bang, boom. There you go. Now I want to fill this with this blue so we're going to make sure that we have our paint bucket. We're going to go up, put our little arrow into this blue, hold down option. It picked up that blue. You can see that it picked up the blue and then you just click it and now it's that same dark blue. Command J, go over to our move tool, drag it over. And just like that, we have our shapes. Once again, before we do anything else, let's label our layers. And now our flaps are the right color. Let's get rid of our layout, make sure everything lines up. Got a little bit of a gap here and a little bit of a gap there. So we just simply activate that layer, arrow up once and it connects. Same thing, top flap front, activate it, arrow down once, twice, now it's connected. Let's put our box layout here again. Now we'll do the same thing with these flaps over here. Now we have a little bit of overlap here and here. I'm not too worried about that. We could go in and try to clean it up, but I don't really care. It's, we're gonna cut this all out later on anyways. So let's get rid of our box layout and see how it looks. Looks good. This I'm going to move over, just nudge one space to my right. And this one down here, I'm just going to nudge one space to my left. Now we need to label our layers, don't forget. Let's go put our graphic elements back in just to remember the things that we need to add. So we don't need anything here, nothing here, and nothing here, or on these flaps as well. We don't need anything on those. Those will all be hidden. So these are Dundios, and the first thing we want to do is cut out our Michael Scott, the regional manager of Dunder Mifflin. And so I'm going to open the cartoon version of Michael Scott that I found online. So to do that, I'm going to go to File, Open, and then I'm going to find my source picks. I put them in a nice folder here so that I know exactly where they are. Now this is a bit small to work with. I'm going to cut him out using my quick selection tool. So I'm going to expand it, holding down Command on my Mac or Control on your PC keyboard 
and I'm going to use the plus sign just to bring it up. So now it's 200. I basically doubled its size. And now I'm going to use my quick selection tool. I don't have any real straight lines. So using this tool, you simply just drag your mouse over your image and it grabs everything that you want it to grab. On an image like this, you have to be careful that you are also grabbing the black outline edges of your character. So if you notice on his shoulder, these little marching ants go on the outside of the black line, but on his ear, it's on the inside of his black line. So we want to make sure that we just get all of those black edges. In order to make our brush bigger or smaller, you use the open and close square brackets on your keyboard. Left square bracket makes it smaller, right square makes it larger. If you notice, I've grabbed a little bit of this background here and I don't want that. So I'm going to hold down Option and you can see that there's a little plus sign in the middle of my eraser. And if I hold down Option, it's negative sign. And so that will allow me to ungrab and it just naturally tries to find those edges. Now, if I cut this out right now, I know that this little section is going to be missing because I can see that those little marching ants are there. And so this is when you use your select and mask tool and that shows you where your edges are. So I've got a little bit of white showing back here or the background, a little bit of background in some of these corners, but definitely this chunk of his face is missing. So I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to go in here and make sure that I've got that little section grabbed as well. And I'm going to select and mask again. And I can see that there's a little bit on his chin. So sometimes this is just really a matter of just toggling back back and forth to see what's working and what's not. And now I've got a little bit of the edge of the cup. I'm actually gonna hide this cup in my final design so I don't need it. And so I'm just going to ungrab it. I could also just erase it later on. Okay, this looks pretty good. So now that I've got it all selected the way I want it, I have to get rid of some of these edges. I don't want those to show through because that will really stand out against the black or the blue background. So I'm going to use the radius. And I'm gonna just take the slider drag it up a little bit and if you notice we are losing some of those revealed edges and then i am just going to sharpen them up a little bit with contrast when i'm happy with it which i am i'm just going to select ok and then i'm just going to copy and paste this into this blank serial template so command c i am going to go over to my blank template holding down command on my mac control on my pc and click v and there's michael gary scott I'm going to move him over because I want him here on the front. So I'll go to your move tool and drag your character over. And I'm he's too small, so I want to make him larger. So I'm going to use my transform tool. Command T. And then hold down shift and drag out one of these corners. And it will make your character larger or smaller. Now this is why you need a high resolution image. Because if this was a super low resolution image and I tried to blow it up like this, it would start to get blurry and pixely right away and I would lose the clarity. So this is roughly the size I want. I'm going to hit enter to get rid of that tool that I'm using, the transform tool. We can move them around a little bit. Now, in my final design, I want a big bowl of our product right here. So I'm just going to go and do this process again, only this time I'm going to use my cereal bowl image that I also stole blatantly from the internet. Now I don't want my bowl to go onto this bottom flap and I don't want it to go onto the side flap. So to get rid of that, I'm going to use something very simple. There are probably more sophisticated ways to do this, but that's okay. I'm not worried about that. I am going to use my eraser tool. So click your eraser tool. Then up here, you want to change your hardness and your size. So hardness, you want 100%. I want it to be sharp. And you can change the size by using the open brackets as well or close brackets. Now this is a straight line and then for this edge I'm going to hold down shift and just drag it across and then it automatically creates this sharp edge. It will also do that going straight up and down. Hold shift and then just hold the left key and drag it up. And so now our bowl is in place. The next thing I want to do, I'm going to add my product logo. So I call this Dundios. So I'm going to go to my text tool and then click anywhere because we can move this around and I'm just going to click on here and I typed it. Now right up here you'll see that it's light blue. This is my text color. So here's my style, uh, the format like it's bold right now. Here's my text size 80 points. It's sharp and the color and it's center aligned and everything you want for your text is up here. I don't want it to be blue of course because it doesn't stand out. So I'm going to just highlight it and I am going to choose white. Now it stands out. Of course, it's too small. So activate your text tool, double click it, and then you can go up here and just if you hover over, the little pinky will show up with the arrows and you just simply hold down the left side of your mouse or a keypad and just drag it up 
and then it will increase or decrease in size. So I'm gonna call it Dundee O's, but I want to use a graphic for the O. And so I'm just gonna write down Dundee and put down the hyphen for now, and there it is. Now I wanna use a different text. So for my text, I am going to use this one called Laugh Riot that I downloaded from 1001fonts.com or something like that. So that is my text, Dundee, and I'm gonna make it a little bigger, about right, and it's gonna go up here. Now on mine, I actually had this curved, and we do that by again, activating the text tool and clicking on this little T with the curve on it. This is your warp tool. Go to style and arc. And then that's a bit too much. I'm just gonna bring this back a little bit, right about there, and click okay. I don't want it straight like this. I want it on a bit of a curve, so Command or Control T, and then hover off to the side, and this little arrow turns to a curve, and you just angle it up. Move it into place wherever you want it. And when you're happy, click return. I want this to stand out against my background a little bit. And so I'm going to put what's called a stroke around it. And so I'm going to use my FX tool again. And then I'm going to use stroke. And you'll see that it actually put a white line. You can't see it. So I'm going to make it a dark blue line and click OK. Now you still have a hard time seeing it because the size is so small. So I'm going to bring that size up. And you can see that now it is making a thicker outline. Now I want the O, and I'm going to use a graphic for that instead of a letter O, another thing that I've gotten from the internet. So I go to File and Open, and I'm going to use this O. Now I don't want the outside, I, and I don't want the middle, I just want this. So I'm going to use my quick selection tool to get rid of these things, but it's locked over here. So simply click on the lock and it disappears. And there is my O. Now I also want my O to be yellow. So I'm going to go to my paint bucket tool. I'm going to go over to my color picker and I'm going to choose a yellow or an orange or something to that effect. I'm going to click OK and I just click inside here and it turned gray. Now, the question is, why did it turn gray? And I'll tell you, I happen to know the answer because this is a weird little format. And when this happens, go up to your image and then go to mode and you can see grayscale is selected and you want RGB color. Now if I do it, it turns yellow. I'm going to take this image and I'm going to drop it onto my cereal box. So this is a really neat little trick. You just go over here onto your image and you left click and hold and then drag it over and hover above your image that you're working on. Bring it down and drop it. Command T to make it smaller. And then you can place it right where you want it. Don't forget to label your layer. And now I want this little hyphen in front of the O instead of behind it. And so I'm going to change my location of this layer. So I'm gonna take the Dundee and I'm gonna put it on top of the O instead of underneath it. And now there it is. Now Dundee is a bit too far over. So I'm going to reposition my Dundee, Command T. I'm going to change the angle a little bit and I'm gonna move it a little bit right about there. And I'm happy with that. Now, these are not Dundee O, it's Dundee O's. And so I'm going to create an S. And all I want to do is use my text tool again, click anywhere on here, type the letter S. I'm going to give it a stroke and it keeps the same settings as I did before. Click OK. And then I'm going to move it into place, Dundee O's. I want this S a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go to my text tool and I'm going to, in my font size, I'm just going to drag it down a little. That looks pretty good. And I am going to reposition it. And now I have my Dundio's logo. I'm happy with this logo, but I want it to stand out a little bit. First, I'm going to connect all of these layers. So the Dundee, the O, and the S are three separate images, and I don't want it. I want it to be one thing now because I'm gonna use this logo a couple of times. So I've got the S selected. I'm going to hold down Shift. I'm gonna hit Dundee, and then I'm going to keep holding Shift and the O. And then I'm going to, I'm going to Control and right click, and I want to merge the layers. But before I do that, I have to rasterize it. So rasterize type. Now do it again, control, right click, merge layers. Now my logo is one image and I'm gonna relabel it because right now it just called it whatever was on top. So I'm gonna call it Dundee O logo. I want it to stand out a little bit off of my box. And so I'm going to add another effect to it. I'm gonna go back down to effects and I'm going to do a drop shadow. So click drop shadow. And as you can see, it just drops this neat little extra shadow. Click OK and now my logo is finished. Now I can drop this logo wherever I want. So I do know, right, because we have our graphic elements that I also need the product name or logo right there. So with this logo layer still active, 
I'm going to duplicate it. Now there's two of them. You can see Dundee logo copy. And I am going to drag this and put it right there. But look at that. It is too big. So I'm going to resize it. I'm not going to change the size of the font this time. I'm going to use my transform tool. Now that top flap is finished. That's all I'm going to add to it. My graphic elements says I also need the logo here and here. Okay, let's do a couple of really easy things. On the bottom down here, we want a UPC symbol. And on this panel, we want to put the nutrition information. Super, super easy. So we're gonna go up to File, we'll go to Open, and then we will find our nutrition panel and open. Now, this is already exactly what we want. We don't need to do anything to it. We're gonna drag it up, hover over the cereal box, and just drag it down and drop it. Command T, because it's obviously too big, shrink it down to size. And I'm actually going to stretch it a little wider. In this case, don't hold down shift. If you hold down shift, it maintains its shape, but if you don't hold down shift, it'll stretch it out. Let's drop our UPC, we'll do the exact same thing. And that's perfect, just like that. Another element that we need to include is we need the company logo. And if you know anything about Dunder Mifflin, you know that it was briefly taken over by Sabre. No, Saber. And so we're going to add the Saber logo because it actually looks a bit like the post serial logo. So it kind of fits. I want to give away a mini Dundee in my cereal box. And so I'm gonna put a little thing right over here. That's why I wasn't too concerned about his elbow and this little edge of the desk because I'm gonna cover this up. So in this case, I can try to use my quick selection tool, but if you notice, it grabbed part of this shadow. And having done this project a few times now, I know that that's actually a really difficult little chunk to get rid of by using this tool. So let's get rid of these marching ants by holding down Command or Control and then pressing D. And we will use a different tool. In this case, we will use our polygonal lasso tool. I'm going to Command C and Command V. Now, right now, it just looks like a little square, but I want it to have a little curve to it because it's a little piece of paper and when you pull a sticky note off, it kind of comes up along the edges. So let's go to Edit and let's go to Transform. And this time, instead of Perspective, we will go to Warp. Now you see all of these little anchor points are points where we can drag out and it will pull the paper, or the shape rather, into this shape that we want. Now this piece of paper looks like it's just stuck to the box and I want it to actually look like it's sort of 3D. So I'm gonna put a little drop shadow on here again. I'm gonna go down to FX, I'm gonna do drop shadow. I don't want this red drop shadow in this case, I want a black soft drop shadow. So I'm gonna go to my color picker, I'm gonna make it black and I'm going to soften this up by bringing down the opacity so the shadows aren't really solid colors and I'm gonna do the spread and the size now I need to put my Dundee on here because my giveaway is going to be a mini Dundee. Now we need a little more text because we want to say free inside mini Dundee. So we're going to go to text, click anywhere you want. Now I don't want to use the same text, it gets too repetitive too quickly. So I'm just going to choose something else. So I want to put something right here, and I think I'm going to put a little voice bubble. I want to put a little bit of text down here. So let's just say chocolate flavored pulp cereal. I don't like this text, so I'm going to change it.
Okay, we're almost there. So let's do the back panel and then this little side panel. So the back panel is really easy. So let's tackle that one first. I'm gonna put a little maze and uh, Michael and a Dundee and it's going to be, you know, help Michael get to the Dundees and that kind of thing. So let's add our maze. So instead of going to file and open this time, let's go to our finder and I'm gonna grab my maze and instead of opening it and moving it around, I'm just gonna drag it. We need a little cartoon Michael, which I happen to have. Now we're going to put, hey kids, help Michael get to the Dundees or get his Dundee or something like that. Now the last thing we have to do is put something right here and you can put this, you know, whatever, whatever it is that you would like to put here. Cut it out if you want, glue it all together and now you have your own box of Dundio's cereal. Hope you enjoyed this. Thank you very much.